when I kind of started to feel alive again was the day that I was actually rescued. And that was on uh, the night morning, whatever, however you want to call it. Um, Cause it was like midnight, but you know, um, of April 1st, of, well, April 1st back here. But um, so, and that was when, you know, they started to come into to uh, Nazaria to figure out where I was at. Um, and then they were able to kind of locate me. And, um, but for me, like, because basically it had been pretty quiet, even, even at the hospital. I mean, there really wasn't any kind of noises, nothing was going on. Um, you just, I just didn't hear a whole lot of anything. Um, but that night I could hear, you know, the Hummer or Humvees, I could hear tanks, I could hear, you know, bombs going off in the, in the distance, um, creating those diversion attacks, like uh, the helicopters, like I could just hear all of it. And it felt like, to me, that they didn't know that I was in there. And this was going to be the building that they were going to take down next. And, and I hate to put it that way, but like, that's just how I felt. Like I was like, yep, they don't know I'm here. And this is going to be one of the buildings that they're going to bomb to kind of clear mm -hmm. it out. And, it, and it is, it is what it is at this point. Um, so, you, so you didn't think it, there was a rescue mission. You thought it was just part of the offensive no. coming through just to, just to crush the insurgents. And yeah. you, you, you had no idea that that was actually, okay. Yeah, that's, no, that's, I had that's, absolutely that's, no idea until I could hear um, in the hallway, I could hear them asking, you know, where is private lunch? And at that point I was like, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, like something's about to happen and they, they are coming after me, whether this was going to be good or bad. And I had no idea what way it was going to go, even though, and here's what was crazy about it. Even though this was English for the first time I'm hearing English and in my mind, I'm playing it out as nope, don't, don't trust, don't trust anybody. Like, you know, yeah, you know what I'm wondering, I, I would even think just on a visual primitive level, right, you are being held captive by Middle Eastern men. And I would just think the sight of whether it was white men or black men speaking English, it would be like, these are my people. <laughs> well, right? I mean, I, mean you, I, I, w I was hopeful. I, I should say that. But I think in the back of my mind, it was like, at this point, don't trust anybody. Like, because even though that one could speak broken English, it was still playing in the back of my head of like, whoa, wait, hold up. Um, because the one thing that we were told when we went over is that, you know, they like to take uniforms from our KIAs and they like to dress up as us to play it against us and and make you think that that's an american coming at you when in, in fact yeah, it's yeah we, it's we had rob furlong on the podcast who spoke about that about about enemies wearing you know in his case canadian uniforms but yeah yeah i mean so we we were told told that so i mean i think that obviously played in the back of my mind of like all right well if they're going to do that like i can't i can't just trust anybody that's going to come at me even though they are speaking in English and you know for the first time I'm hearing this and I should be excited and I kind of and I was but at the same time I was so fearful of the unknowns because I knew no matter how this was going to play out that I was their target again because I could hear my name and I knew whether this was good or bad, that I was the one that they were coming after again. Um, so part of me was like, you know, oh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> like, wh what do I do now? I mean, like, again, I can't run. I can't hide. I can't, I I'm there. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just in the bed chilling and, and just, you know, waiting for whatever is about to go down, go down. Um, so thankfully for me, though, the, the two, Iraqi men that so one was standing by the door I was kind of in a 
if you think of like our hospital rooms, but on a much smaller scale, even though that kind of sounds crazy, but um, so there was basically room enough for, for a bed and that was about it in that little tiny room. But one was standing by the door, one was by the window. Um, and both of those men were, were let out. And before I knew it, then I was just being surrounded by, you know, our Navy SEALs and the, you know, one of the, the PJ standing beside me and taking off the American flag off of his uniform and, and placing it in my left hand and, and telling me we're Americans and we're here to take you home. And, um, as corny as it sounds, the only thing I could think of at the time was, yeah, now I'm an American soldier too. And uh, yeah, so they they were able to hurry up, whisk me out of there, get me get me to the awaiting helicopter, and kind of that's where the big rescue video that was played out for everybody was was showing them um, uh, loading me up and and getting me from there and then I went on to Germany.